four and a half supplements that you can use to improve performance, mainly via a blood flow pathway. Let's break them down. Just because I'm a pessimistic kind of guy sometimes, let's talk about the ones that are not going to work really quick. We'll just cover this. Look, at arginine. Arginine is great, but it cannot be really used in a supplement form. It's almost pointless. Arginine is a precursor to something that we'll talk about a lot, okay, the nitric oxide synthase pathway. We need that because that's going to allow the blood vessels to dilate to get more blood flow. Okay, I cannot think of any situation where more blood flow isn't good in an exercise situation. Maybe you have muscles that you can't really activate very well, but if you produce more blood to that area, maybe you can activate it better. Maybe you can get more oxygen delivery. Maybe you can get better performance, you know, whatever. Better muscle pump if that's what you're after, because that's a big factor for a lot of people. The issue with arginine is not the arginine itself, it's how it's marketed. You cannot take arginine in an oral form and expect it to do the job, okay? First, it gets heavily broken down. It's not bioavailable, but it also gets catabolized by the microbiome. Our own microbiome, our own microbes within our gut break it down and eat it for fuel so it doesn't really get absorbed and utilized. So let's just get that out of the way. Arginine, good, but not really in supplement form. Okay, then there's one other one that I kind of have to lean into that's sort of inconclusive, and that's one called betaine. Okay, betaine is cool, but it's kind of cool for a different reason. It doesn't necessarily stimulate blood flow. There's a study that was published in the International Journal of Exercise Science, okay, and it found that when they gave subjects betaine, it did not improve their plasma nitrate levels. So it wasn't doing anything with the NOS pathway that we're really looking at today. But there's another study in the Journal International Society of Sports Nutrition that found that if you took betaine consecutively for 15 days, there was a pretty decent increase in squat performance. So the point is, is yes, it seems to be a decent ergogenic aid, but not via this NOS or blood flow pathway we're talking about. So anyhow, let's move on to the ones that you do want to take. Tried and true citrulline melee flat out. Okay, we see it in muscle pump supplements all the time, but it actually has some performance benefits as far as the NOS pathway goes. Look, it is a precursor to arginine. I'm going to keep this very short. Any precursor to arginine is going to support the vasodilation and the improvement of blood flow. The Journal of Applied Physiology published a study where they gave subjects six grams of citrulline malate for one week. Okay, then they had them do like an all-out sort of 10-minute bike sprint, and at the end of that 10-minute bike sprint, they did a 60-second all-out like high-intensity sprint. They found that by taking the citrulline melee, they decreased blood pressure at the end of the event, showing vasodilation had occurred, but also improved their performance. I look at this because, okay, I wanna see a decrease in blood pressure because that indicates that we're getting more blood flow, but not triggering so much blood pressure. Like we're actually getting the delivery. So that's really cool with citrulline melee. But anyhow, that's one that you find all over the place. Doesn't mean it's bad, it's just, it's popular. Let's talk about one that's new that has some interesting science. Okay, this one is called glucosyl hesperidin. I've been a fan of hesperidin for a while and I've had people ask me questions about it, but this glucosyl form goes through a specific process. It goes through something called glycosylation, okay? So it's a flavonoid that is glycosylated. And what that means is it turns it into a form that's a little bit more bioavailable. But all that aside, what does this hesperidin do when it's in the body? Well, it seems to have an effect, of course, on nitric oxide, but there could be an interesting effect on the mitochondria too, which might relate to why people see an improvement in performance. But first, let's talk about this interesting Japanese study. So this study took hesperidin and it gave it to individuals that had issues with circulation. So they had a circulation disorder where their hands would get really cold. Okay, my sister is like that, literally. Okay, so they took these subjects, they gave them hesperidin at 250 milligrams. They gave them 250 milligrams and then they exposed their hand to an extreme cold temperature. Okay, they found that the skin temperature was significantly increased if they took hesperidin and they ended up having an improvement in blood flow. Why is this fascinating to me? Well, it's fascinating to me because I try to look outside of just the ergogenic kind of like performance side. There's a practical application and something is going on in a very powerful way. Like for example, like my sister has such terrible like circulation, but she's a mountaineer. So she's climbing 14 years all the time. She has to literally wear battery powered gloves to make sure her hands stay warm. It's a bummer, right? But then you look at things like this that stimulate blood flow in such a way, even at rest, there's a lot of potential benefits that are coming, but it's not just at rest. Here's a performance study that was done in 2018. So this one was published in the Journal of Science and Sports and Exercise, okay, and it upped the dose a little bit to 500 milligrams of this hesperidin. Okay, and then again, they had them do sort of this 10 minute all out peak power. Okay, yeah, a modest 5% increase in power upon taking 500 milligrams, 
But what was really interesting is it improved the oxygen to power ratio. What I mean by that is they got more power out of each unit of oxygen. So it's suggesting that yes, we're getting more blood flow, but somewhere along the line, we are also improving mitochondrial efficiency so that less oxygen is getting converted into energy or less amount of oxygen is needed to get converted into energy. That could be huge because that means as you're starting to go up the overall curve of higher performance, you could be getting more out of this particular supplement. It's cool, it hasn't really hit the mainstream yet. There's one brand that I know of called Citrapeak from Bomar Nutrition that has it. I'll put a link down below. It's the one that I use because it's literally the only one that I can find that has what I like in it and I would consider fasting friendly, keto friendly, and totally good to go. It's just a really interesting supplement and it's something that I think is going to really be taking the world by storm. And we're probably gonna be seeing more products have it, but I like it because it's in capsule form and I don't have to take a beverage that breaks up fast or anything like that. I would much rather have a capsule that's going to get me that improvement in blood flow potentially. Anyhow, it's just a fascinating supplement and big thanks to Bomar Nutrition for allowing me to do this video and for the support on this channel when they uncovered that I like their product. So check them out down below. This next one is one that could go really well in tandem with glucosyl hesperidin. Okay, pomegranate extract. Pomegranate seed extract gets thrown under the rug a lot because, well, beets end up taking the limelight. But if you ask me, pomegranate extract might even be better than beets. It works along a similar pathway, that nitric oxide synthase pathway, once again. Okay, we're stimulating that, more blood flow. But what's interesting is that it also has another component to it that might be improving blood flow independent of that. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, there was a study that took a look at 19 highly active individuals, and these individuals took pomegranate seed extract. And when these subjects took it, they had a 30% increase in blood flow after 30 minutes. That's pretty intense. However, it was relatively short-lived. So it might be something that works in a very acute setting. However, it didn't seem to have a huge improvement in plasma nitrate. So that kind of suggests maybe it's the polyphenols. There's other studies that take a look at grape and like pomegranate polyphenols and find that they improve blood flow independent of the nitric oxide synthase pathway. So I like that because if you can combine things like possibly combining hesperidin along with pomegranate seed extract, maybe you're tackling two different ways to get more blood flow and also having sort of this mitochondrial efficiency effect. It just could be a very powerful ergogenic aid that doesn't, I don't know, classify as a banned substance or anything. And the last thing that I have to touch on that I still think is very, very important is one that I've talked about briefly already, and that is beets. Okay, beets do have one of the highest amounts of dietary nitrate that you can get. That is pretty important and it counts for something, okay? And I just wanna reference one really cool study that found that nitrate in the body has a different effect outside of just helping us with blood flow. It alone improves the phosphate to oxygen ratio within our mitochondria. And that ultimately means, for those of you that are performance or muscle pump chasing or anything like that, it means that your body is literally able to create more energy or more phosphate for ATP with oxygen. So again, we look at it, we say, this could work as something that's going to allow us to create more energy in our mitochondria. The big glaring downside with beets is that there's calories and carbs in them. So you can't just have that if you're fasting or having a fasted workout or anything like that, which I highly recommend for mitochondrial efficiency and performance anyway. So that's the huge glaring problem. Pomegranate seed extract, kind of the same thing, but you can get it in pure extract form. Okay, citrulline you can definitely have and it's not gonna break a fast. It's totally good to go there. Okay, glucosyl hesperidin, absolutely, especially because that's in a capsule and you're not having to take a whole bunch of it. So nothing in there that's gonna break a fast, especially the one from Citrapeak. Okay, and then of course, if you're looking at any of these other ones like betaine or arginine, those are good to go. It's just we don't know how they're going to really affect you in a positive way or not, especially arginine. So anyhow, just to wrap it up, citrulline, glucosyl hesperidin, pomegranate seed extract, and good old-fashioned beet extract if you can get it. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.